Hi everybody, this is Joe. Well, it's been a long time since we've done a typing assignment and it is really overdue and I'm glad I finally got off my rear end and got the typing assignment started. I think the timing was really interesting, right? In the middle of the COVID uh, epidemic, having this assignment on the subject of hope and I really thought it would be meaningful to you and to me to ponder in words what hope really means in a time this day when we really can use some hope. And the results that you guys came up with were astounding. Some really great work in here. And that's probably the most we've had for a typing assignment. And a lot of newcomers, probably two-thirds of you or more, were newcomers to the series. And I welcome you to this series, and hopefully we'll do them a little more often than we have uh, more recently. But I wanted to say that... Um, there's a lot of really personal work in here. People talking from the, from the depths of their heart and from intimate things that have happened in their lives. So uh, I think there is a certain amount of respect that we have to give each one of the participants when they have gone to the trouble of opening up their heart to us, to the public. So with that, uh, sit back and enjoy reading these pieces. Now, if you're unfamiliar with typing assignments, the way I do this here in the presentation is I'm going to do what you might call a slideshow. I'm going to do a close-up pan and scan from the top down of each page. I'm going to give about 30 seconds for each page to scan vertically, but I expect you to pause the playback and read it at your own leisure, at your own reading pace. I'll let you read it through, and then we'll go to the next one in order. And I'm doing these in a seemingly random order. It's not alphabetical or anything. It's actually roughly the order that I received your piece. I'm going to try to put a little music background on top of this, but I'm going to try to drop the audio down so it's not so irritating, okay? So, anyways, hope you enjoy this. This is Typing Assignment 23 on the subject of hope. Okay, well, this first piece comes from a newcomer to the typing assignments, Amado Navas, and he typed his piece on an Underwood Finger Flight Champion. And this is, of course, his first submission. Uh, Amato is a computer guy who loves old technology, and really it's a letter to me, and it really starts out as a plea for help, as he calls it. Right in the middle of this plea for help, he says, So far, my typewriter collection is small. We'll probably stay that way, parentheses, I hope. What's interesting about this is his plea for help in really his hope is that his typewriter hobby doesn't get the better of him. He doesn't want that collection to get too big. And I'm not so sure if I'm the right person to give you any advice, Amato, because I certainly have gotten my collection too big over the years. Um, he also makes mention of he's had some escapement issues in his typewriter that are hidden deep inside the machine, impossible to get to, and he's asking for some help about that. And my advice about th those kind of things, if you're not experienced in working on typewriters, and even if you are, there's some things that you should leave up to a professional. And my personal advice is save your money and get it fixed with a professional and you'll help keep him in business and you get your typewriter fixed properly and you get to know your limits. Okay, that's my advice, but Amato, welcome to the Typing Assignment Series and I wish you well and I hope that typewriter collection doesn't get the best of you.
Our next piece is by Andrew Carter. And this is a great piece. It's very heartfelt and personal. It's really a life's journey from despair to hope. And he really describes very succinctly this life, the old life, if you want to call it that, of, of despair. But then he finds a path toward hope, and he finds that there's temptation along the way to revert back to his old life. He finds that further he goes, the better it gets, I think. He says, the future seems so bright, so full of truth, so full of hope. That word I faked for so long, I wore the mere external component of hope, but never the depth of the sensation. I am at peace now, despite my troubled past. Not only the past, but look, there comes the present and the future, too. It is so real now. I see it. I feel it. Oh, how I long for it. So this is a really inspirational, personal piece, and it really leads us through this uh, this life, this journey that he's had from troubled past to hopeful future, and he gives us a lot of hope in reading it. This is a really great piece, Andrew. Thank you very much. All right, the next piece is by Anthony Connolly, and he wrote his on a 1921 three-bank Underwood Standard Portable. And this is a poem called Hope is Indeed a Thing. And it starts off with Emily sings the one without words. And I really think this is beautiful because I think Emily, I mean, I'm inferring here, I think Emily is, is probably his daughter. This is about this COVID-19 era, this where he writes, in this fugitive of years. How true, how poignant that is, right? We're living in a fugitive of years. Later on in the poem, he says, doing it now for the years to come when we see finally where our hope arises from. Doing it now, meaning going on the good path, doing the things we need to do to stay safe and be healthy and everything. He says, but we listen to Emily Warble, the one without words. Mighty music sends our worries alight over and through the enduring fight. He says that we suffer the swelter of a shut-in summer. And really, for the hope of the future is what he's getting at. For this Emily who sings without words. And so really, it's all about the future, the kids. We're really hoping they'll have a better future in this fugitive of years. What a great piece, Anthony. So heartfelt. Thank you very much. Cameron Johnson wrote his on a Hermes 3000. There's a Hermes 3000 right there. Well, let's see. His is called Hope. This is an essay. And what I love about this piece is it makes this transformation from hope is imperfect. He says hope ignores darkness. Hope lacks reason. Hope has a bittersweet aftertaste if it's not fulfilled. Hope is annoying when you don't want it. Sometimes you don't want to have hope, and yet it transmutates here throughout the poem where it starts to say, Hope is fine like sandpaper. It feels soft, but with time and effort, it can be used to rub away at any blemish, big or small. So hope takes time. And then he starts to say that hope is perfect. It makes a transformation from hope is imperfect to hope is perfect. He says hope burns inside. It holds you firm. It finds a way back to you. It weathers down mountains. It warms you. And it's kind and understanding. He says, hope hates magnifying glasses because it likes for you to see the bigger picture. 
And he finishes with, hope is everything. Hope is nothing. Hope is for each man to find himself. Hope is perfect. He starts with hope is imperfect, and he, and he ends with hope is perfect. What a great transformation of thought about hope. Hope gives us hope for the future. That's right. Thank you very much, Cameron. I really like this. This next piece is called A Meditation on Hope, and it's written by C.J. Harper. And it's written on a 1967 Smith Corona Corsair. And it starts out, like a lot of pieces about hope, they start out talking about why we need hope. And she starts out, Sometimes I find myself thinking why I continue to be hopeful when the world around me seems to be burning. She goes on to talk in the in the top part of this about her friend Sophia that she lost, right? Sophia passed away. She says, despite the world seems like it's burning, she still believes this world is beautiful. So she goes through this second paragraph really talking about really the, the trauma, the inner trauma of losing her friend and also how lately it's been harder and harder to believe the world will get better. The deaths, plural, right? Deaths seem to get more real and seem to get closer and closer every day, right? However, despite all this, she says, despite how dire our, our circumstances are now, no matter how steeped in this violence and intolerance we find ourselves in seemingly every day, I still believe this world is beautiful. Isn't that great? Strange, she says, how could I think of beauty in a world so flawed? Good people are all around us, just as long as we keep an open mind, they're all there if we look for them. And then she says that I still want to believe, to hope for a better world. And really, it's kind of what she, what she brings up is, is it's, a, it's a matter of will. She's willing herself to continue hoping, and that's really the essence of hope is we have to want to believe for a better world. And I really appreciate, CJ, your poem, your, your feelings about the loss of Sophia. And really, this kind of piece does, I think, give us hope. When you see people go through some real difficult struggle in their life, and yet they can still come out the other side of it saying, I still want to believe in a better world. Thank you very much. This next piece was written by David Cornelli, one of our longtime participants on a 1967 Adler Tippa S, and his piece is called Hope on 18 Wheels. Uh, this is a neat piece because it really uh, speaks to something that I've noticed, which is those people out there that are keeping our world running. And in David's case, he's referring to the long haul truckers, the people going down the, the highway keeping us supplied with the things of civilization, right? He says, as long as trucks are rolling down the highway, everything will be all right. And that is so key, right? Is putting down all the hopeless thoughts and feelings and just step outside and look at, look at all those people that are busy doing their thing, keeping us going. Isn't that great? Well, he says, trucks are part of a system that has kept the world supplied without interruption throughout the pandemic. Not, boy, is that true. 
not only the 18 wheelers, but the all the delivery vehicles, the quirky right hand drive U.S. Postal Service trucks, and the immense road trains that make their way across the vastness of Australia. He goes back in time here. He says, I believe history is why my perception of hope was focused first on trucks. I grew up in the 1970s, a time when truckers and citizens band or CB radio were frequent topics on American popular culture, music, movies, even television programs. And that just reminds me, your letter, David, reminded me that I had this old VHS copy of, yes, Citizens Band. <laughs> I'm going to be re-watching this movie. Thanks for reminding me of Citizens Band. You say the importance of logistics. It really is what you're talking about. An army travels on its stomach is kind of the analogy that I can think of. You know, like World War II was won largely due to superior logistics, right? And even ancient cultures traded via trade routes, the spices and everything. So caravans, logistics, long-distance supply is crucial to civilization. And you say, finishing up here, knowing truckers and others are keeping the world supplied despite challenging circumstances gives me hope. What great thoughts, David. How practical is that? It really is. Thanks very much. Well, our next piece is by David Randall, another uh, longtime participant in the series. He typed his on a 1941 Smith Corona Silent, and his is called uh, Hope. And this is a story about a lady named Pandora. I can't help but think, though, uh, and it involves a black rectangular case, which we typewriter people can kind of imagine. It's a typewriter. Yes, it is. In fact, it is a Smith Corona Silent. Uh, from the late 1930s, according to the story here. So it's starting to sound almost autobiographical or a little bit symbolic of something here, semi-biographical maybe here. A mysterious envelope is hidden inside this old typewriter case, and she finds there are photographs and negatives inside the envelope. And it says, turning the photographs and negatives over, she realized they had to be the real thing. She stood up. It would be dangerous, but she knew who she had to give them to. For the first time in a long while, there was a way to return hope to the world. Well, this is interesting. It's an interesting, interesting story. We want to really know more. What did she find? What was the significance of those photographs? But I also think there's some symbolism here because David has found hope in some kind of imagery involving typewriters. Just the fact that he he wrote us this wonderful story, right? So in some symbolic way, his typewriter has also uncovered some kind of hope. I like the dark imprint of your typing also, and I like the less than perfect alignment of your typewriter, by the way. I think it's perfect. It's perfect. And that is a lesson for us to keep in mind. Thank you very much, David. This next piece is typed by Diane Cox on a Hermes 3000. Yes, very good. It's titled Hope. And what this is, this is a quote from Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman, if you know about Neil Gaiman, he's a very prolific creative person. But this was a quote that was actually in his journal dated December 31st, 2008. He is a famed, very prolific author, and I like the quote you chose, and I think it's important that we 
do have people that we look up to, creatives who we can quote them, and, and they inspire us and they give us hope. He says, I hope you will have a wonderful year and that you'll dream dangerously and outrageously, that you'll make something that didn't exist before you made it, that you will be loved and that you will be liked and that you will have people to love and to like in return. And most importantly, because I think there should be more kindness and more wisdom in the world right now, that you will, when you need to be, be wise and you will always be kind. Boy, is that a message that we can use today, not just back in the year 2008. Thank you, Diane, very much. It is very neat to, to have writers who we hold their work in our heart and we can quote them and that they give us inspiration. And this certainly gives me inspiration. I appreciate it. Thank you. This next piece is by Diane Mayer, and she typed this on an 1899 Smith Premier number four. This is probably the oldest typewriter in this typing assignment. So this is called From No Hope to Hope. This is very autobiographical, I think, if I'm assuming correctly. It is a poetic recounting of a difficult period of health issues. She starts with a trip to the ER, interminable waiting. No room available. Boy, is that a common occurrence here in the United States, huh? We can relate if we've ever been to the ER, either ourselves or just for a family member or friend. And, of course, you talk in the middle paragraph about the difficulty of managing the health care system, just the logistics. And as smart of a person as you are, it still takes so much effort to get through to the doctors, right, and to make sure that they diagnose you correctly. And what I really like is down toward the bottom, though, after all this trial and getting, trying to get things diagnosed properly and repeated visits, outlook hopeful. Another little piece of hope is, hey, it's an 1899 Smith Premier Number 4. It's still going strong. It's a beautiful typer. Isn't that great? Diane, I hope you're on the mend. I hope things are going well for you. And thank you very much for sharing this intimate health-related piece with us. It really is inspiring. Thank you. So this next piece is by John Campbell, and he wrote it on a 1933 Erica Model S. The piece is really this Erica typewriter speaking in the first person. It says, I have hope to one day be the favorite. At this time, I am a trailer queen. I have hope one day to be the favorite it says. And so it's really talking about the pecking order of typewriters in a person's collection. And there's this envy of not being number one in the collection, which is very interesting. And then he goes on to talk about all the reasons why he's a better typewriter than the current typewriter who's number one in the collection. And he says, someday I will get to go out again and travel freely to roam without fear to visit the coffee shop again. Until that day arrives, I will just need to be patient and wait. I can always hope. And that's a really interesting thing. So it's not just about per, you know personifying our typewriters as if they were conscious, but I think there's a little bit of the hope to go out again and be a typewriter in a coffee shop is really 
our hope. It's John Campbell's hope, right? It's all of us people who love to use our typewriters out in public. This is our hope that we'll get over the COVID situation and we can go out again and enjoy things the way they were before. Well, I really appreciate, John, your piece. I really enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Well, this next piece is by our friend John Monroe, who lives over in Japan, and he wrote this on a 1950 Smith Corona Sterling. And the piece is titled, Nikos Notwithstanding. And it begins with a quote, no hope, no fear, free. And that quote is written on the tombstone of Nikos Kazantzakis, who is the author of Zorba the Greek and a lot of other works. And this quote was quoted to John through one of his spiritual teachers uh, many years ago, and that quote gave him lots of hope. However, later, his hope was dashed by that same teacher who ended up compromising his message through a lot of different things in his life, as John recounts. But later on, though, John's disappointment turned back into hope through the means of other friends of his who were great meditators and who made a point in teaching their technique to never take anything from their students. They shared what they had because what they shared had been shared with them. And then John finishes by saying, in the words of Stephen King, the author who wrote The Shawshank Redemption, the last words in that book and in the film were, I hope. And John's hope, of course, is that he still has a long way to go in terms of his spiritual path and meditation, but he continues with that hope. And I really like the idea of passing on what one learns free of charge without any strings attached. That's great, John. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. This next piece by Kevin Anderson, he wrote on an Olympia Deluxe in italic uh, typeface called A Lifetime of Hope, and that's what this literally is. This was really touching, uh, Kevin. Thank you. So it starts out, I hope Graham and Pop come for, Sunday, for dinner Sunday. I hope Santa brings me a red bicycle. I hope I get to go to Billy's birthday party. And it continues as he grows up. I hope I pass my driver's test. I hope Mary will go to the prom with me. I hope I get the scholarship. I hope everyone keeps their promise to keep in touch after graduation. I hope my resume will be good enough to get hired. And as time progresses, I hope Anne likes the ring and says yes. I hope Mike will be my best man. And then I hope it's a boy. I hope I get that promotion at work. I hope Tommy puts gas in the car after I let him borrow it today. I hope the company will let me retire a year early as time passes. We can all, if we're of any kind of age, we can sense this whole progression in life, right? And then, I hope it's nothing serious and Anne's tests come out positive. I hope my sorrow will fade with time now that she is gone. I hope the house sells quickly. And then, toward the end, I hope my family comes to visit soon. I hope the new medicine helps with the pain. I hope it doesn't hurt anymore. I hope I did the best I could. I hope it's all true, Faith. I hope. Wow. That's what life is. It is a series, a lifetime of hopes. 
Thank you, Kevin. That was really special. Okay, this next piece is written by Kevin Kittle, and it's written on a Hermes 3000 typewriter, and it is titled Statue of Liberty National Monument Reopening. I have to pause here and explain that in the course of the typing assignments videos, I've always tried to remain open to allow people to express their views, even though I may disagree with them. I think that's part of the essence of having an open society. At the same time, though, I think it's important that we not go too far in our extreme views to offend other people. That being said, uh, it's difficult for me to present this piece as something that I agree with. Most of it I don't. But I'm going to give Kevin the liberty of letting his piece remain in this presentation with the caveat that it is highly politically charged. You may be offended by it. And because of YouTube's policy around monetization, this video is demonetized. I will not monetize this video because this one piece is politically controversial, and that is one of the conditions for monetization that a video cannot be politically controversial or offensive. So with that said, here is Kevin Kittle's piece, Statue of Liberty, National Monument Reopening. This next piece is written by Will from Hong Kong, China, and it's dated 24th of July, 2020, on a Friday. And so he's really talking about what's happening in his life with the coronavirus pandemic going on in Hong Kong and having to study uh, and go to school remotely via Zoom meetings and Google Classroom. And... Uh, so he talks about how, as of this date of writing, in Hong Kong, there were still like 123 local cases that day and one fatality, which sounds very similar to the current statistics here in the state of New Mexico in the United States. Um, so he talks about how he has to attend the Hong Kong public examination test in the year 2022, and so he's preparing for that, but because of the deteriorating conditions of uh, the ec epidemic, what's interesting, though, is that in, during the pandemic, most of the adolescents are playing online games and using Snapchat or Instagram. And so they're really spending less time studying for the test. And that's the best time, as Will says, for him to transcend. I will spend more time, he says, revising and doing more exercise to train myself so that I can know more about how good the time management is that he did. And finally, I can get a better result in the exam. And so that's really good, taking advantage of the time, Will, and making the best of it. And he says, I hope, there he goes, I hope everyone can stay home and stay safe during this pandemic. Stay healthy and good night. Well, Will, good for you. And really, that's the best best hope for the future is to use our time as you are wisely. Thank you, Will.
This next piece is written by Lucas Barletta on a green IBM Selectric 3 typewriter. And he his piece is titled Hope, and it is a poem, and I'll read it. Hope is like a small, bright light in the deep darkness. We follow it and then realize it was a firefly, yet most of us haven't acknowledged that it will lead us to a sparkle. That's really special, Lucas. That is what hope is. It is a bright light in the darkness, and we do follow it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Max Arnold's piece is very good. Uh, so he says, uh, t he starts out by picturing yourself in the middle of the ocean, basically stranded at sea, and the only thing you have is your memories of what it was like before the accident. And he says that this situation is familiar in castaway stories. It serves as a great example of hope since the person in this situation has lost everything and but the hope to reach land and home. Most of the time we don't really notice hope. It's unnoticeable until we really listen to it, till everything else is pushed away, like in times of great struggle. Bear in mind that hope in times of hopelessness isn't completely lost, he says, and it is when in fact it happens to be most noticeable. Hope does serve a particular purpose. It enables the first ever stage of planning to foresee a future. Once we know what we do and what we don't want, we can start to work on reaching there. Hope does just that. He sums up by saying, we should listen to hope and use it to become better. Listen to it and do what's good to everybody. Well, those are great words, Arnold. I really appreciate your writing. Thank you very much for participating. Well, this next piece is written by Michael Moore on an Olympia SM7, and of course it's titled Hope. And he starts out with this line, hope is the opposite of despair. And that is so true. Uh, this is really an essay on how hope has figured it into his life. He grew up in a broken home, and his grandfather was his mentor. But he recently lost his grandfather along with his... Um, mother-in-law. And so there's a lot of recent loss, losing his mentor. And he says that patients can remain depressed longer than required due to focus only on themselves. And he says, I started to realize that hope, in my case, was the focus on my wife and children. Things remain slightly foggy due to the events of this past year clouding his focus. And he can think back to how hope has shaped his life in the past. Growing up in a broken home, his grandparents uh, being open about their mistakes in their marriages, he wanted to correct those wrongs. And so he said that at age 12, he started reading feverishly with the goal of correcting the mistakes of the previous few generations. This hope also that I could treat my wife much better than the men I came from treated their wives in order to cease the pain my grandmothers expressed. And this has made him better. And he says that hope, though, has pushed him forward to read wisdom texts. And he mentions having read and studied Frank Herbert's work, and he's found much hope in that. Hope is good fuel and focus. And that's so true, Michael. I really appreciate it. That's heartfelt and uh, really autobiographical. But it is so true that you have to find that grain of hope in your life and 
aim toward that. Thank you very much. Well, Michael Rodriguez wrote his piece on a Smith Corona Secretarial 250 electric typewriter named Excalibur. That's a great name, Michael. Okay, so his piece is titled Hope, and it's a really neat uh, essay. So hope, by definition, is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. And for him, he says it's one of the strongest emotions humans have in their repertoire to survive as a species. So he's making the argument that hope is essential for survival for humans. And he uses as an example the film The Matrix Reloaded, where the character Neo finally meets the architect and says, and the architect says, Hope, it is the quintessential human delusion, simultaneously the source of your greatest strength and your greatest weakness. Isn't that interesting? In the end, you hope she will say yes to marry you. In the end, you really don't know for sure. But you hope with all your being, every fiber in your body, your brain and gut feelings give you that feeling of hope, that it will go a certain way. It has to. The universe is proclaiming this outcome for you. In the end, he says, it's only hope. I hope you understand. I hope you feel it too. I hope you read this. And he says, stay creative. Thank you, Michael. That was great. And that is so true. Hope is really essential to us as a species. How powerful that is. Thank you. All right, this next piece is written by my friend Mitchell Farley on his Hermes 3000 wide carriage with elite typeface. And uh, this was uh, condensed down from the original draft, which was uh, much longer, he says. So, for me, hope is the process of getting back up and brushing the dirt off and marching forward again, regardless of how many times I stumble or falter. Hope is spending time with my family and closest of friends. Hope is finding that lone ray of sunshine peeking through the clouds even when everything appears gray and stormy. Hope is not losing myself under the crushing weight of tragedy and loss. Hope is never giving up the dream for a better tomorrow, no matter how bleak the future may seem sometimes. My hope for everyone reading this is that you too can find it within yourselves to be gentle and kind even when you may be angry, to smile and laugh although you may feel sad, to hug your loved ones and tell them how much they mean to you. Like all things in life, this too shall pass and this pandemic is no different. I pray that you all stay safe, healthy, and positive even in the face of adversity. I know that the sun will come out to shine again. And last but not least, he finishes, in the words of our friend Joe himself, I hope you all stay creative. Yes, Mitchell. Thank you, Mitch. I really appreciate that. Great words. And finally, we have this great piece written by my friend Vinnie McFeets, who is a new 
newcomer to the state of New Mexico, and he lives out in Gallup and teaches at the University of New Mexico. His piece is called Hope in the Age of COVID-19 and begins, The star you're looking at no longer exists, but it is there nevertheless lodged inside your mind. The other day you woke up to more horrible news. People are dying, but we drift in a haze as if, as if. There used to be a clear line between dream and reality. The real was the hard thing, and the dream was what you wanted to happen. But we drift in this new world, clinging to something that is neither, breathing slowly and waiting. Everything has become an act of endurance. But maybe this new space, fraught with viscous anxiety, moment by moment, harbors a kind of hope. When the future is uncertain, turn to history. There you will find the star in the pitch sky, and no one can tell you that it isn't there. That is the opening paragraph of this wonderful essay that he posted recently to his blog. And if you haven't read his blog, I advise you to go read it. But he says that hope is not an abstraction. Hope is an action. You are the vehicle of hope with sweat and tears, with work-worn hands, like your parents and like your parents' parents and like your parents' parents' parents. That star in the sky. Let's call it hope. Keep your eyes on it. It is something beautiful that you can make happen. Well, Vinny, I really appreciate those words. And yeah, we need to look back to history, the history of our world and history of our families to see hope. Well, I was very proud to have read all 20 of these pieces, and I hope I represented them properly for the audience. It was really special reading your thoughts about hope, and it has given me newfound hope and a lot of new perspectives on hope, and I hope it's done the same for you. Well, until next time, stay well, stay creative, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.